Monique, thanks for joining us. It's good to have you here. And I want to introduce you to all of our friends uh, that are that are listening. Uh, Monique is the Senior Vice President of Flow. Let's talk for just a second about what you do here at Walmart and your role now. So my role is pretty interesting. It's called Flow. Flow. There's a transformational component and there's an operational component. Okay. And so um, Flow is really, really, in simplest terms, the efficient movement of product from supplier to shelf. Right. And everything we do is about eliminating lost and wastes in time, touches, cost, and cash. Right. And in doing so, we um, touch kind of every product that's coming through the system, through the suppliers, and we try to find the most cost-effective route to get that to our suppliers and into the stores so that we can have, again, and maximize everyday low cost. Right. And it seems straightforward. It seems intuitive. But when you start thinking about delivering over 8 billion cases to 5,000 locations and trying to have things at the right time, the right place with holidays and work schedules, weather, traffic delays, it's really complex. You know, it's complex, John, but it's really a lot of fun. It is fun. Well, you get to take and move a lot of product through a lot of networks, and you get to deliver great things to customers at prices they like. And so the complexity of that is moving through hundreds of distribution centers, mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of trucks, right? trying to figure out, is it cold? Is it warm? Does it need to be heated? Does it not? How do I get it in terms of high cube, low cube? Being able to take all of that variation and complexity And in its simplest forms, making sure when you hit that shelf, it's right there for you. What is it that caused you to be this person that's like, you just run to problems? You know, I I just love change. Mm -hmm. I get bored really fast. And so uh, to keep things interesting, Mm -hmm. I like to keep it moving. And so if I sit somewhere too long, I actually get bored. I like to get in. Yeah, I like to get in, get to the complexity, get it solved, get it ready for transformation, get through it, and then hand it off so someone else can then keep moving in the next direction. But that's, I like to keep going. That's great. So you grew up in Louisiana. I grew up in Louisiana. Louisiana. And when you were uh, a little girl in Louisiana, did you ever think you'd live in Switzerland, London, Arkansas? No. I was between right. hot and cold, between yeah. Louisiana and Milwaukee, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Switzerland was not on the radar. Um, and you can imagine, right? I, I arrive in Switzerland. And they start talking to me in French because my name is Monique Picou. Yeah. And Siri was my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a few people that speak French. In yeah. Louisiana, I got sure. a little better, but it, but it wasn't my forte when I first got there. What are the things you're thinking about this year as you look forward into the changes that are affecting customers and retail going forward? I think the biggest change we're, we're, that we're about is probably digital transformation. And that is in serving customers, in being able to get product moved and being able to get it moved from Excel sheets to um, dashboards to um, automated tools that allow us to flow it. It has been very, very transformational. And there's still yet to come. We're on the journey and we're just very much just getting into it. And when you're thinking about customers, mm-hmm. we would use the term broadly because your customers and my customers they're certainly the people, the, the most important customer is the person who shops, mm-hmm. whether it's on the website or Absolutely. in the store. But for you, a customer also is the store and the associates of the store. It's the associates in the distribution center and suppliers who mm-hmm. are using the product mm-hmm. to ship it. So mm-hmm. you've got to mm-hmm. think about mm-hmm. the customer from really from end to end. Yeah. And I mean, I came from CPG. So for coming from that variation, I was on the other side of Walmart. Mm-hmm. And so I know what it's like to be there and have to receive. Mm-hmm. And so I've been very intentional trying to make sure that we show up stronger, mm-hmm. so much more in a partnership way, and then making sure that from the variation of customers we have, because you're right, it's a huge diversity of a customer lens. So what the suppliers get from us is more automated solutions, so they're not having to ring us up to figure out when they're going to schedule their trucks. We've got an automated system now that allows them to get that done. If I think about the stores and when that product is showing up, we're working on some tools now that's going to be able to give them ETA availability. So it'd be really exciting for them to have that coming along the way. When I think about the other side of just customers internal to how we get things done, from negotiating contracts to moving um, elements of speed associated with time being currency, because we don't always think about that, but it absolutely is a currency in terms of how customers want to shop. And then ultimately, this customer at the store. Mm -hmm. I never visit a DC without going to a store because I want to stay in touch with that customer and what he or she is finding when they're in our stores. And I'm a huge online fan. So so what brought you to Walmart then? You were a supplier, mm-hmm. had worked traditionally in, mm-hmm. in manufacturing, uh, I think engineering, you remember mm-hmm. telling me, ride yeah. and yeah. sales, all, yeah. and all sorts of functions. So what, decide, what made you decide to come, number one, into retail, but then what brought you here? 
So, you know, I'd always looked at retail, but never thought of myself here. Ever thought I'd be here. And um, I'll tell you, I think... I said the same thing, and I got a part-time job when I was 19. <laughs> I'm still here, so I get it. I think there was a little bit of covert action between mm. Walmart because <laughs> I had the opportunity of participating in an innovation conference in Atlanta for yeah. a company called Manucure. And uh, two days later, I got a call. Yeah, and good. I'm like, are you sure? I don't think you were talking to, to the same Monique. No, I'm sure it's you. I said, okay, tell me how you found me. And we had a good conversation. And um, coming to the um, understanding of how big the opportunity was, because I love challenges, and the more interesting that became in terms of the dialogue of what we needed to get done, uh, just the more energized I got. And uh, when I got here and had a chance to walk through, I mean, it's, it's interesting walking through a supply chain building that you know was a previous store yeah, and saying, right. okay, this is my starting point. So That's right. That's right. That's right. And there's exactly. so, much, so much diversity and things you can do in a retail company. Well, yeah. one of the things I, I didn't want to bring up, um, you recently participated in, I want to make sure I get the name right, Fortune's Most Powerful Women Next Gen Summit. Correct. So first, congratulations. Thank Tell you. me about it. What was it like? You know what? That was uh, an amazing opportunity and, and amazing on a couple of fronts. So one, I had a chance to engage with some amazing Walmart associates. So um, I won't shortchange the ladies that went with me. Um, and so we had a chance, never met each other, but walked in together and became fast friends, which I think is amazing. But more importantly, it's a group of powerful women who are storytelling. And so you think about the boldness of women who share their stories on professionalism, on parenting, on entrepreneurship, on business, and, and even some personal tragedies where they've just been able to overcome. It was just huge. And so you think about having to take a trip to be able to find that space. But it really is the interaction that you have with women who you know have had similar journeys and really see the challenge in those who thrive in risk. And, and I'm a very calculated risk taker, and so I don't shy away from a from a good fight and good competition. And all of the stories that you got a chance to hear just made you think about what your journey should be and what it could be because it's not yeah. over yet. So yeah, I, right. I could just not have been more happy with the time I spent out there. That's great. And it, you know, every person, every associate, every customer has a story. And I, I remind myself all the time when I think I'm having a bad day, I have mm -hmm. so many stories people have run across and you just have to remember mm -hmm. there's always a way mm -hmm. to get through whatever you're facing. And I'm sure it was it was great to be there. And look, one of the other things um, you've told me about um, since the first time we met, which, yep. is on, which is actually on a trip. <laughs> That's correct. We're on a trip in Alabama the first yep. time we met. And uh, something that I've learned about you over time is education mm -hmm. is really important to you, mm -hmm. um, particularly mm -hmm. STEM. So science, yep. technology, engineering, yeah, math, and art, um, mm -hmm. the, you know, the whole mm -hmm. group of a uh, suite of, of skills that people are wanting, uh, needing to learn to be competitive in the economy. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about um, what caused that and the work you're doing with young ladies in STEM. Yep. So um, I always loved math from just a little girl and was very fortunate that uh, during high school, I took this test called Cruder Preference. And it said, you know what? I think you'd be a great engineer. And so I said, yep, I trust you. And I did. Yeah, you did it. And that <laughs> is did. a lot of math. For yeah. anyone thinking about being an engineer, <laughs> it is a lot of math. It is. And so I'm an electrical engineer by degree. And um, what I've noticed is as I've come out of the workforce, uh, come out of university, gone into the workforce, both home and abroad, um, there are very few uh, women that you see that stay with STEM. And I think about the interesting time that is today, it's a huge digital revolution. And the technical breadth that you get mm -hmm. allows us, I think, in a perfect position to leverage that to be able to help figure out the pragmatic approach to how we go broader, deeper, because data is everywhere. It's just what you do with the data and how That's you right. leverage it. And oh, by the way, because of the way we're trained, it gives you a chance to structure that so it can become relevant. And it sounds intimidating when mm -hmm. you think about the journey from a high school student to becoming an electrical engineer, mm -hmm. mechanical engineer, industrial engineer, computer scientist. But it, but it's not impossible. It just takes time. It and, does. And every one of the courses and the learning, it, it builds upon itself. And mm -hmm. then over the course of your lifetime, you may not use those skills every day. No. But, but the you way apply. You apply. It's the way that you learn to think. Correct. And I know that because I was um, an industrial engineer for a couple of years and then switched to being a marketing major. There you so, go. Uh, <laughs> I somehow ended up in this world where... I did a bit of both and, and have an appreciation for both. So I know it's a lot of work. It is. Well, um, Monique, uh, congratulations on uh, being involved in the summit, mm -hmm. but also uh, certainly appreciate everything you've done here at Walmart. And thanks for taking the time today to tell us about your story. Appreciate you asking. It's been a great ride so right. far. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.